couple of housekeeping things first. There seems to be two Zoom links that have been sent out for this call, and I'm going to spend some time making sure that everybody's got the right link. So be checking your email because the Zoom link may change, and I'm going to eliminate one of them and so that we only have one Zoom link, and then I will forward that out to everyone. Also, remember that we do not have a call tomorrow or Friday. Uh, take time, enjoy a very long weekend with your family, enjoy Thanksgiving. And for today, we're going to talk about the 14-point listing presentation. Get ready to take notes and write as quickly as you can because I'm going to move really, really fast. Uh, all right, so the 14-point listing presentation is the same listing presentation that I used for close to 15 years to take 10 or more listings every single month. And one of the reasons you want to master this presentation, the 14-point listing presentation, is because it's going to give you confidence to make more calls and ask for more opportunities. Because if you're making calls and you're asking someone, hey, if I could show you how I could sell your home for more money and less time, and they say yes, and you don't have a listing presentation, then, oh my gosh, now what? So the number one benefit that you're going to get from this is more confidence to make more calls. All right, we're not going to go over all 14. That's a that's a six-hour class, and we're going to do this in 30 minutes, but I am going to highlight a few of them. We'll go deeper in, in, on some and just breeze over the others. All right, step number one, schedule the appointment. Step, step number two, soft interview. Three, Kodak moment. Four, tour the home. Five, begin the conversation. Six, do a needs analysis. Seven, prioritize their needs. Eight, pricing strategy. Nine, supply and demand. And 10, close. All right, schedule the appointment. We're going to give you a couple closes or um, scripts that you can use to schedule the appointment. My favorite one is if I could show you how I could sell your home for more money in less time, would you be interested in seeing how I could do that? Now, here's why that's my, my, my favorite close to schedule a listing appointment. It's a curiosity question. I'm not asking them if they want to list their home. I'm asking them if I could show you how I could sell your home for more money in less time, would you like to see how I could do that? So if I get any kind of response that says anything but yes, I could respond with, you know, Alan, just curious, aren't you at least curious what I could do, what I would do in order to sell your home for more money and less time? Or I could use my resume. It, when I was taking listings for the DEETS team, it would be, Alan, aren't you at least curious what I'm doing to list and sell more than 10 homes a month at an average of 99% of the asking price in less than 30 days? Aren't you at least curious how I could do that? You don't have to hire me, but what do you have to lose by at least sitting down and meeting with me? Okay. Soft interview happens the day before you go on the appointment. And you need to let the person know that you're speaking to that you're going to make a follow-up call. And the purpose of that follow-up call is to gather information that you're gonna need in order to prepare for the appointment. You could write that down, it's a script. And I'm not gonna go really deep on this because I have in the past and I've given you guys this actual form that I use um, to ask questions. But a few questions that I'm going to ask are, how long have you lived in your home? Tell me what kind of improvements you've made to your home in the last three years. Uh, based on other properties in your neighborhood that have sold recently, where do you see your home selling? When your home sells, where are you moving to? Why is that important to you? Uh, are you interviewing any other realtors? Have you thought about selling your home by owner? Are just a few of the questions that I'm going to ask ahead of time to prepare for that appointment. Now, coaching moment. Don't skip this. I've done that, and the results are always less when you skip 
this soft interview, your closing um, percentage is much higher when you've done the soft interview. All right, step number three, get on the listing channel. So I'm meeting with Alan today and I'm meeting with him at 5 p.m. I've called ahead of time to confirm the appointment and I'm in my car and I'm on my way to Alan's house and I've given myself plenty of time in order to get there early. Super important because if you're running late and you're frustrated because you're running late, if you're frustrated, sorry, I was reading Sarah's comment. If you're frustrated because you're running late, then that's going to make a very bad first impression when you greet that person to the front door because you're not showing up happy, excited to be there. You're showing up frustrated. That's not good. All right, the listing channel simply means it's, a, it's, it's mindset. Turn off your radio. Definitely don't listen to anything negative. Absolutely no um, talk radio. Uh, that will absolutely ruin your mindset. Don't answer your phone. Uh, repeat affirmations, repeat your listing presentation, um, visualize the result that you want when you're sitting at that kitchen table. It's all mindset. It's making sure that you're in the right mindset to knock it out of the park. All right, the next step, Kodak moment. The Kodak moment refers to your first impression when they open the door. And again, for anybody that's on the call that's Younger than 40 years old, Kodak is a camera that existed like a thousand years ago. <laughs> and your Kodak moment is that opportunity to create a first impression. Now, I'm going to knock on your door. I'm going to arrive at your door two to three minutes before our appointment, not 10 minutes. That's not on time. It's early. And not five minutes after five o'clock. That's late. I'm going to arrive at your front door two to three minutes before our appointment and I'm gonna knock on the door. I'm not gonna ring the doorbell. I'm gonna knock on the door. Now, here's the reason why. If they've got a baby sleeping in the back room and you ring the doorbell and you just woke up the baby, then you're not getting off to a great start. You know, Tom Hopkins would say that the reason he knocked on the door versus ringing the doorbell is you couldn't ring the doorbell enthusiastically. <laughs> I like that. So knock on the door enthusiastically. Now, Paige comes to the door and I'm three to four, five steps away from the door. I'm not right in her face, <laughs> not looking through windows. I am laid back, casual, looking down the street. You know, I used to teach, I'm looking to the left. <laughs> And when they open that front door, hi, Paige, I'm John Dietz. We had an appointment at 5 p.m. and it's 5 p.m. May I come in? All Hello, right. Cool. Thank you. I'm dressed professional. I have dress shirt, dress slacks, hair's cut. Everything's groomed. I look amazing. I look professional. I'm not overdressed, but I'm definitely not underdressed. And pay attention to the details because that's what they're going to remember. Okay. Now, when Paige answers the door, hi, Paige, I'm John Dietz. We had an appointment at 5 p.m. It's 5 p.m. May I come in? Now, I'm going to walk in her front door. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look around the house. I'm going to go, wow, you have a beautiful house, Paige, and I'm so excited to be here, and I'm excited to have this opportunity to help you sell your home. Now, what you're doing is you're assuming the listing when you do that. You're also using an embedded command, sell your home. Now, you may hear, oh, we're not sure if we're going to hire you. And your response to that is, that's awesome. I understand. That's it. Okay. Now, offer to take off your shoes. Be different. Be polite. Be nice. Don't be pushy. Offer to take off your shoes. Paige, before I take a further any further step, would you like me to take off my shoes? Okay. Now, I'm going to ask, the next step is toward the home. I'm going to ask, uh, let's go to somebody else. I'm going to ask Megan if she would give me a tour of her home. Simply, hey, Megan, if you could give me a tour of your home, um, I'm going to take some notes. Remember, I'm pointing at my notebook because I'm showing them. I'm going to take some notes. I'll ask some questions. And this is the information that I'm going to use to help you 
sell your home, second invented command, okay? Now, as you're touring the property with the homeowner, and you're doing this because this is an opportunity to connect with them before you sit down at the kitchen table and begin the listing conversation. Now, connect with them doesn't mean, oh, you like dogs, I like dogs, 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 dogs. No. <laughs> connect with them means that you're going to convey that you care about them. You're going to convey that they can trust you, and you're going to convey that you know what you're doing. Now, take notes. Super important. Take notes out loud. Beautiful family room, vaulted ceilings, wood floors. Oh my gosh, this kitchen is incredible. I'm taking notes as I'm, as I'm doing this. Granite countertops, maple cabinets, stainless steel appliances. It's all going in my notebook. They see me writing, they hear me writing. Stainless steel appliances, travertine floors. I love your kitchen. All right, ask questions that a buyer would ask. How old is your roof? How old is the AC system? If it's an older house, how old is the electrical system? Um, how about plumbing? Uh, ask questions that a buyer would ask. Apologize for the background noise. Uh, Long guys are here. <laughs> okay. Um, make sure that you look at every single room. Don't shortcut the process. You're gonna be tempted to, because this takes time. They're gonna ask you, do you wanna see out back? Don't say no. Now, why do I know that's a mistake? Because I've done it. Absolutely, let's go out back. Again, ask more questions. If they live on the water, what type of boat can I put on the water? Do you have unlimited access to the Atlantic Ocean or to the Gulf of Mexico or whatever body of water they're going to? <laughs> or are there any fixed bridges that you need to go under? Important information, isn't it? Because it's going to have a lot to do with our pricing strategy. If they say, as they're pointing out the improvements, if they say, I've got a brand new grapefruit tree over there, I've got a brand new orange tree over there, your response is, that's awesome, and write it down. You may be thinking it's not important, but if they mention it, it's important. Do you care about me? Remember that. You don't care about them if you're not taking the time to write down the things that they think are important, okay? We've got these handmade bookshelves in the family room that my father made, and they're absolutely amazing. They stay with the property, and they're going to add so much value to the home. Now, you may be thinking, hmm, the buyer is more than likely going to just tear those down, and it's going to cost money, and then they're going to have to uh, uh Your response is, I love your bookshelves and write it down. Do you care about me? Can I trust you? All right. As you're touring the home, don't make suggestions. So many real estate agents really mess up here. They go in and they think it's their job to start staging the house. It's not. When you're touring their home, please write this down. Like their home. So important. I had so many sellers that I would speak to, and I've been on thousands of listing appointments, and I've heard John so-and-so came, and they didn't even like my house. Why would I hire them? It's a good question. My response to that, by the way, is I don't know. I love your home. Hire me. Now, you walk into a bedroom, and it's got purple shag carpet from the 70s. It's got, it's got fuzzy wallpaper on, on the walls. And you're thinking, oh my gosh, what were you thinking? No, don't do that. Now, if they ask you if they should make an improvement, and otherwise, if you hear, I was thinking about taking the wallpaper down in this room, repainting, and I want to get rid of this shag carpet and put down some hardwood floors. What do you think? Your response is, I would. Okay, now if they ask you, I was thinking of gutting the kitchen and totally remodeling the kitchen, it's going to cost a lot of money. The answer is not, I would. The answer is, let's take a look at that when we're discussing pricing strategy. 
Because it might be a good idea, guys, and then again, it might not be a good idea. All right, following me so far? I hope so. All right, after you tour the home, you're gonna end up at the kitchen table. This is the begin the conversation part of the meeting. And this is 100% scripted. Angel, thank you so much for meeting with, with me today. It is always an honor and a privilege to meet with a potential um, homeowner and discuss the possibility of selling their home. I'd like to start by sharing my mission statement with you. My mission is to meet your goals and exceed your expectations. Now, because of that mission statement, Angel, whenever I meet with a potential seller, one of three things typically happens. One of those three things will more than likely happen today. Either number one, it's just like this, okay? Number one, they understand everything that I have to say and they hire me, embedded command guys. So number one, they understand everything that I have to say they appreciate the benefits that I offer and they hire me. The second thing that occasionally happens when I meet with a potential seller is they don't hire me. And the third thing that occasionally happens is I may turn down the opportunity. Now, it's a pause for five seconds. And it's a pause to give them an opportunity to ask you, why would you turn down my listing? Because they think every single real estate agent, hold on. They think every single real estate agent is desperate. And they think every single real estate agent will take any listing that they can get. When you tell them, the third thing that occasionally happens is I may turn down the opportunity to sell your home. It's empowering. First of all, you're empowering you to turn down the opportunity and you're empowering them to not hire you. Do you care about me? Can I trust you? Do you know what you're doing? Now, if I would tell you this is not part of the appointment, I'm coaching right now. If I were to tell a seller anything that they wanted to hear just to get a sign in their front yard, can they trust me? Do I care about them? No, I don't. I'm looking for a win-lose. I'm fine with a win-lose. And in both of those examples, the real estate agent is the one who won and the homeowner is the one who lost. Real estate agent wins because that listing is gonna generate phone calls. Those phone calls are gonna turn into buyers and more sellers. So they're using that property in order to market their real estate business. They don't really care if the home sells or not. However, because with you, it's win-win or no deal. If you can't meet their goals, you can't exceed their expectations, you would rather turn down the opportunity than let them down six months from now. Matter of fact, that's the script. Back into the conversation. So Paige, you may be wondering why I would turn down the opportunity. And the reason is, if I felt that a homeowner had a goal or an expectation that I could not meet or exceed, I would rather turn the opportunity down today than let you down six months from now. Does that make sense? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of questions that are purposeful in getting yes. The more times I can help you say yes, when I ask you, are you ready to get started? Yes, 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 yes. Are you ready to get started? Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. It's it, We're playing chess, guys. This is strategy. Pay attention. Now, the other thing I want you to notice is I never said, I never spoke about Paige directly until we got to, I would rather turn the opportunity down today than let you down six months from now. Go back to the first part. One of three things typically happens when I meet with a potential seller. One of those three things will happen today. Either number one, they understand and appreciate the benefits that I have to offer and they hire me, which is awesome. The second thing that occasionally happens is they don't hire me. And quite honestly, that's not so awesome. Now, am I speaking directly to Paige? No, I'm talking to Paige and I'm sharing the experience that I've had with other sellers. 
here's the reason why this is important. The other way to say this, which by the way is the wrong way to say it, is one of three things typically happens when I meet with a homeowner page, and one of those things will happen today. Either number one, you'll understand and appreciate the benefits that I have to offer, and you'll hire me, which is awesome. Or number two, you may not understand and appreciate the benefits that I have to offer, and you won't hire me. Now it's about page. And I don't want this conversation to be about page until we get to the very end of the conversation. Here's the reason. I don't want to convey at any point that I'm suggesting that they don't know what they're doing, that they may make a bad decision. No, it's not about them until we get to the end. Now, the next step is prioritize the needs. Well, no, the next step is a needs analysis. I got ahead of myself. Once I have the transition statement between, I would rather turn down the opportunity today than let you down six months from now. Does that make sense? And Paige says, yes. Awesome. Then I need to ask you a couple of questions in order to know if I can meet your goals and exceed your expectations. Script, please write it down. It's a transition statement from the previous step to the next step. And first question, Megan, on a scale of one to 10, with one being not so great <laughs> and 10 being awesome. What's one thing, not what's the one thing, not what needs to happen. What's one thing that needs to happen in the sale of your home in order for it to be a 10? Now, Megan says, I need to get my price. You're taking notes. You're writing this down. Get my price. Use their words because you're going to feed this back to them later. Get my price. Write it down. Now, go deep. Try to go three deep with every answer you get. The first question I'm going to ask is, tell me what does that look like to you? In other words, what's your price? Now, I'm hoping that Megan will give me a number. She might not. She might say, I have no idea. That's why you're here. If you hear, I have no idea. That's why you're here. Simply say, I understand, makes sense. Remember, they wanna be right. They wanna be understood. So you're gonna respond with, I understand that makes sense quite a bit. Now, if Megan says $500,000, the next question is, tell me what that would do for you or why is that important to you? And she says, it's gonna give me the money that I need in order to purchase a new home. Great. Why is that important? I'm digging deep because I want to find out what their real needs and expectations are. And if I hear, well, if I don't get my price, I can't afford to buy a new home in Atlanta where I'm moving in order to start a new job. Pretty important information, correct? Yeah. Okay, if we could accomplish a second goal, so this would be a 10 plus experience. What's your, what's the next goal? And Alan says, sell my home quick. And my response to that, I'm writing it down, sell my home quick. I'm using Alan's words, sell my home quick. And I'm writing it down. My next question is, Alan, tell me what does quick look like to you? 30 days, cool. So if we had a contract in 30 days for your home to sell, to close, that would be a 10 plus experience. Yes, awesome. Tell me what does that do for you? What does selling your home in 30 days do for you? Whatever they say, write it down, all right? If we could accomplish a third goal, so this was a 10 plus plus experience, what's the next goal? And you might hear a number of different things. One of the most common answers is, I want a smooth sale. I don't want to have any problems. No unexpected challenges. I want it to go, I want it to be easy. You might hear, I'm looking for a real estate agent who's willing to discount their commission. Whatever they say, write it down. And the next question is, why is that important to you? 
what would that do for you? If their answer is, well, I would net more money. Why is that important to you? It's gonna give me the money that I need in order to purchase the home that I wanna buy in Atlanta. Yeah, that makes sense. Now I'm gonna keep asking them, what's the next goal? What's the next goal until they have no more goals? Now, I think the most that I've ever gotten is seven. <laughs> and for someone who is a high D, that's me, that's excruciating. Because I'm sitting there, it could take a half hour or longer, and I'm writing every single goal down. I'm going deep. I'm asking, why is that important to you? What would that do for you? Remember, do you care about me? Can I trust you? Do you know what you're doing? If you went to the doctors and forget whatever the problem is, doesn't matter. And you're sitting in the doctor's office and, and she just looks at you and says, tell me what's bothering you. Well, I've got this pain in my stomach. Okay, cool. Jump up on the table. We're going to operate. How would you feel about that? <laughs> I'm, I'm running. <laughs> I don't know about you, but she hasn't asked enough questions. Does she care about me? Can, she tr can I trust her? Heck no. Get the heck out of there. Well, there's no difference for you as a real estate professional. One of the most important things you can do, we're going to wrap it up today at this, guys, because I want to start on time and finish on time, and I'm already a minute over. One of the most important things that you can do to convey that you care about them, they can trust you, is a needs analysis and prioritizing the needs. And yes, I know we didn't get to prioritizing the needs. We will on Monday's call. All right, talk to me. What do you hear? What questions do you have? Put your digital hand in the air, guys. And uh, give me at least two, and then we'll make it a wrap for the day. Hey, John. Um, I think I heard this so often, I could do it word to word, which is a good thing. That's, and don't make me do it now. <laughs> that's the goal, right? Sarah yes. actually put a link in the chat for all of you. Thank you, Sarah, that you can download that has my 14 point listing presentation in it. If you have a copy of Rainmaker or if you have a copy of Scripts for Success, it's in both of those books as well. Sarah, talk to us. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the opportunity. So here's what I kept keep hearing. Um, it's a script. It's a script. It's a conversation, right? And I see agents get caught up, particularly new agents. I need a listing presentation. What's the listing presentation? I need 50,000 slides. And I don't know how to do PowerPoint. And because I don't, and they get so scared that they don't make the phone calls and it is a conversation and the way that this is broken down is let me learn the pieces of the conversation so that I could string them together in the right order and internalize them yes you will have a few things to show a few slides but it's a conversation it's a script Yes, yeah, Sarah, can you can you pause right there? You, you and I are having a conversation. I'm not stopping you because I'm going to give the floor back to you. Um, let's use the doctor analogy again. When you sit down with the doctor and she's doing a consultation with you, does she say, let's pull up my computer and go through a PowerPoint presentation? No. no. If you go to an attorney's office and the attorney is asking you questions in order to determine if... Um, you have a case that they can take, they're asking you questions. They're not mm -hmm. saying, let's pull up a PowerPoint slide and talk about what an amazing attorney I am. No, it's about the person they're meeting with. It's never about me. It's never about the doctor. It's never about the attorney. It's never about you. It's always about the person that you're speaking to. In 15 years of listing over a hundred homes a year, I never, used a PowerPoint presentation. I didn't use any visuals. John Maxwell would say, I'm the visual. 
if you go and listen to John Maxwell speak, there's no PowerPoint. He's just going to talk to you. And he'll tell you, I'm the visual. If you're looking for a visual presentation, sorry to disappoint you. It's not going to happen. I'm the visual. Well, you go on a listing appointment, you're the visual. So exactly. pick up. I, I agree 100%. And what you said, one of the things that um, you said and, and is the soft interview, mm. right? Before you go, mm. I take that a little step further. I do a soft interview, but I also send a pre-listing package, mm. which yeah. has certain information about me. It has certain information. It has their seller's property disclosures. And I call after they receive it because I either will ask them if they want me to email it or drop it off. And sometimes when I drop it off, they invite me in and I just clock it at 10 minutes to go over the, the listing package. And a lot of times when I go to the listing appointment, they have already signed the listing agreement over DocuSign and we are just going to go over the, the marketing schedule. We're going to go over the date for their pictures. Because if you do a, if if you schedule the appointment, do the soft interview, send a listing package, and review it with them, for all intents and purposes, they've already they know you. You know, if you're posting your, you know, I, we have we I do professional. I have my agents take professional videos, mm -hmm. um, and professional pictures, and hashtag and post on their social media. Mm -hmm. When you you can say, hey, you know, are you on Facebook? Are you on Instagram? Hey, mm -hmm. here's my hashtag, look it up. Or you can just actually send them the link to a video and they see that and they see this beautiful video that's done professionally representing somebody else's home. And they feel like, wow, I want my palace represented that way too. So go. it's it's not about a death by PowerPoint. It's a mm -hmm. conversation. And because this is about them, this is mm -hmm. about the seller and their needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Write it down, write it down, write it down, 100%. I'm a big fan of pre-listing um, paperwork that I'm gonna send to them uh, prior to the meeting, the pre-listing presentation. Here's a script for you. The purpose of the pre-listing presentation is so that you can read about everything that I do, everything that we do to sell blank number of homes every month in less than 30 days on the market for an average of 99% of the asking price. Therefore, when I meet with you, I, we're not going to talk about me. We're only going to talk about you. By delivering a pre-listing package to you ahead of time, I'm giving you the opportunity to read about me so that we don't have to talk about me. And when I show up, 100% of our conversation is going to be focused on you. All right, Megan, talk to me. Megan's it, oh, guys, and we're going to jump. Sarah, uh, real quick, we've got three or four requests. If you would put that link in the chat again, there's a couple people asking for it. Okay, Megan, talk to me. So two things. So the first thing is just to um, piggyback on the pre-listing packet. If you want to level up your pre-listing packet, then do it as a like a bomb bomb video of a screen record or a Zoom with a screen record to where your face is on like in a little bubble and you're actually going through the pre-list packet. Mm -hmm. And whenever they click on it, they see your face and it's you explaining the pre-list packet because then there's a face and they feel more connected to you. If you do it through BombBomb, Bomb, you can then see that they clicked on the video, if they watched the video and how many times they watched the video. All so right. there's that, that. That was priceless. <laughs> you guys, if you paid money for today's call, which you didn't, <laughs> you just got the price of your admission. That was amazing. All right, so Megan, John, before we jump, before we jump, Megan, is that an app? So Bomb Bomb is a program that you can use to do videos and then blast them out via email or you know whatever it is. So that is a paid thing. However, don't let that be your limiting belief because you can also do it in Zoom for free. Just screen record yourself talking, you uh, talking through it. So yeah, yeah. What's the cost monthly for Bomb Bomb, Megan? That's a great question. My team pays for it, so I <laughs> I can find out. Yeah, it's not a lot of money, guys. Yeah, it's a hundred. It's absolutely worth the investment, and I, I've looked into it. It's just a long time ago, so I forget. Um, All right, Megan, you've got the floor again. 
The second thing was, uh, is I want to emphasize on the needs analysis. It's not just for them. It's also for you to have a full understanding if you're able to meet their goals and their expectations, because if they start coming at you with these different needs, then you're going to know how to set up that conversation and know from basically right then if you're, if you're going to be, be able to, to, to meet their goals, right? And know if you even need to take the listing. So, Love it. Love it. Is that your music, Megan? Is that you? Megan, is that you? It's okay. I just want to make sure that we're not getting that, that was Megan. She's 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 now like, oh my God, how do I silence this? <laughs> yeah, that's it's that that was not my worry. I just wanted to make sure that somebody wasn't sabotaging the Zoom. That's fine. No, you that was it. me. I'm sorry. I clicked yeah. something and just started no, playing. Stop. It's fine. <laughs> um Adrian put the and thank you, Adrian, for doing that. Really do appreciate that. Uh Pinellas County. Uh, I like you even more. Um, I will be a neighbor of yours soon. Um, Adrian put the price for bomb bomb in the chat, everybody. It's $33 a month. Uh, please put it on your action list. Uh, invest in that today. It's worth every single penny. Megan, you did an amazing job. Thank you for bringing so much value to our conversation today. I don't know about you, but I got a lot of value out of today's call. <laughs> I hope you did as well. Uh, I hope you got your money's worth. Remember, it was free. It's been a while since I used that. Uh, enjoy Thanksgiving with your families. Take time to be grateful for everything that you have in your life. Remember, no, ma no matter how rough things are going for you right now, you are still living someone's dream life. There is someone somewhere who would gladly trade places with you. Be grateful for the little things, guys. Be grateful for running water. There are people who have to walk miles just to get water to cook with, to drink, to bathe in. Be grateful for the fact that you live in a home with air conditioning, with heat. There are people who don't. There are people who don't have homes. When you have to park way out in the parking lot and you go shopping on Black Friday, which by the way, that's a choice. You decided to go, so don't complain about it. <laughs> when you have to park way out away from the store and you're walking a really long way to get inside that store, be grateful that you can walk. There's people who can't. You drove to the store. There's people who don't have a car who never are ever going to own a car. There is always something that you can be grateful for. All right, everybody, make it a great day. I will see you on Monday. Thanks, John. Awesome. Okay. Thanks, John. Thanks, everybody. Have an amazing day. Thank you, day. John. Happy, Happy holiday. Thank yes. you, Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, John. Be blessed. Yeah. Thank Happy you, Thanksgiving. Oh, you're good, son. Thank you. So good to see you. All right, everybody. Thank I'm, you, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna sign off, Rosario. Love you, girl. Keep up the great work. All right, signing off. Make it a great day. <laughs>